Hello, I'm Carl Bradshaw from Chaparral Motorsports, and today I want to give you a detailed breakdown of the 2020 Bell MX-9 Adventure Helmet with MIPS. Now this helmet has been in the Bell lineup for quite a long time now, and the only modification they've really done to it is they've added MIPS, which is a protection program that we're going to talk about here in just a little bit. Before we get there, let's talk about who this helmet is for. This helmet is extremely versatile. You can run it, as you see here, in a dual sport or adventure setup with a face shield and a peak visor. That's probably the most popular way that this helmet is run. You can also remove the face shield itself, run it with a set of goggles, and you basically have a Bell MX-9 helmet. Another way that you could run this is you can remove the peak visor completely, have the face shield installed, and run it as more of an urban street helmet, if you will. So this helmet will take you from the single tracks all the way up to high speed freeway riding. Today what we're going to be doing is showing you a detailed breakdown of what makes up this helmet. We're going to rip it apart on the inside so you can see just exactly what it's made up of there and put it all back together, put it on, give you a 360 and let you know just exactly how this helmet fits. Now let's get into the details. The first thing we want to do is take a look at this helmet in a 360. And while we're showing the 360, I want to talk about the composite shell. This is a polycarbonate ABS shell. That means it's a polycarbonate and plastic kind of all molded into one. Not only is this shell lightweight, but it's also going to be chip resistant. In addition to those two things, you're going to notice that the shell itself has a very smooth and glossy finish. The smooth finish allows you to be able to hit an object and kind of glance off of it instead of the material actually sticking to that object and causing a twist or ringing of the neck. And when it comes to protection or certification, this helmet is a DOT and ECE rated helmet. So in addition to the lightweightness of the polycarbonate ABS shell, this shell comes in three different sizes with three different EPS layers. Now let's take a look at some of the other features and benefits that we're going to see on this helmet. So starting at the front of the helmet, we have the chin vent up here on the very front, and it is going to have an open and close effect. Now when this vent is in the open position, you're going to have airflow that's going to come in this top hole here that's actually going to be filtered up to the shield itself. And then you're going to have these bottom two vents that are going to go straight through to basically the mouth of the helmet through the breath box here. Now just to the side of the main breath box, you're going to have two different vents, whisker vents here on either side of the helmet. These are going to allow wind to come into the helmet and be forced backwards, allowing kind of a venturi effect here on the front of the helmet. Now this is a very nice feature in hot weather. It allows you to get great airflow inside this helmet. Closing the face shield and moving our way up, you're going to notice we have two very large vents here, one on each side of the helmet. It's going to allow wind to come into the top of the helmet and kind of be pulled through the back. Now these vents are fixed vents. They're not going to open or close. It's going to allow this helmet to always be breathing, if you will. Now the only time you're going to run into a situation with that is if you have inclement weather, lots of rain. There's no way to close those off so you don't get rain coming in through the top vents of this helmet. Moving around to the back, we're going to have four more vents. We're going to have two here at the top and two here at the bottom. Now these vents back here are all open as well. There's no way to close them. The wind's going to come over the top of the helmet and kind of pull out this direction. And those venting features are going to allow you to have a cool, clean air feeling in this helmet at all times, no matter how warm the weather gets. Let's take a look at the face shield itself. This is a very thick and it also has a ridge here on the bottom in order to keep that shield from flexing and vibrating or getting the image distorted. It's a great feature of this particular helmet, allowing it to have a very solid closure here at the bottom. The other thing you notice is there's a lip here on the bottom of the visor, and that lip also, as wind comes and hits it, is going to help keep this shield more closed than it would. Um, some of the other helmets out there don't have lips like this, and you actually get a small crack here at the bottom. You get a whistling of wind up underneath. You're not going to have that with this MX-9 Adventure Helmet. Now for opening and closing this face shield or visor, you have a tab up here at the top of the breath box here or the chin bar. Go ahead and lift that up and you're going to have several different indentions on the way up. So you can crack it and run it like that or you have a kind of a halfway open and then an all the way open. There is nothing holding that shield in between each of those indentions. Those are the one, two, three indentions that we have and that's what you have to work with. Now that we walked around the shell in kind of a 360 degree, let's take a look at the peak visor itself. 
Now this peak visor has two different adjustment spots. This is the further back adjustment position. And then if we loosen this thumb screw right here on the top and remove it completely, come on buddy. We can then move this visor forward. You're gonna notice that we have two different holes here on the top, one that has a plug in it and one that is open. Of course, the open one is the one we just removed this screw from. So we can go ahead and move that little rubber bumper back a little further, put our visor back into place and reset this screw. And you can see what the visor looks like in the lower position. I'll go ahead and turn this around in roughly the same position that we had the visor or the helmet before. So you can see what that lower position looks like. Again, this is great for riding into the sun. If you've got that sun in just that perfect spot, you can stop really quickly, adjust this up forward like it is now, and have great protection from that evening setting sun or even the morning rising sun, depending on which direction you happen to be riding. Now that we've shown how this can be adjusted, let's go ahead and remove this thumb screw as well as both of the thumb screws on either side of the helmet so we can show you what this looks like when the peak visor has been removed completely. Now that we have the peak visor removed, let me pull into frame three extra pieces that do get shipped with every one of these MX-9 Adventure helmets. These are going to be the two side plugs that go right here on the side of the helmet that hold everything together so you can run this without the peak visor. And then you have a second little rubber plug that's going to fill the hole at the top here where that peak visor typically attaches. Now when installing these side plates, you need to notice that there is a tab here that sticks out and that tab's gonna be the keeper that goes in between the little groove here on the side of the helmet. And we'll do the same thing on this side. And this here is what the helmet's going to look like in the street fighter setup or the naked helmet that does not have a peak visor. Now this is typically how I choose to run my adventure helmets and the reason for that is I travel at relatively high speeds on the highway and it doesn't matter what peak I've had on the top of any helmet from any manufacturer. If I turn my head to look over here to check my blind spot, that visor loves to pull my neck sideways, so I just choose not to deal with that at all, and I run my helmet in this particular setup right here, this configuration. Now that's how I typically run my helmet for my daily commute, but what I should do is I should carry the peak visor with me so I can quickly just swap it on and off when the sun is either rising or setting. It's a really helpful piece that really is a great feature for these adventure style helmets. Now with the peak visor already removed, I want to be able to show you the installation of a set of motocross goggles onto this helmet with the face shield installed. So I'm going to reach down here and grab a set of traditional moto goggles. We're going to set these in place and pull this strap around the back. Now as you can see, goggles do fit great inside the opening or the eye port here of this MX-9 Adventure Helmet. Now the reason for that really is the fact that this is an MX-9 dirt helmet that they would just adventurized by putting um, a peak visor that works with a face shield on the helmet. So this is what those goggles look like with the peak visor removed and the face shield in place. Next up, I'm going to go ahead and remove the goggles, the face shield, and install the peak visor so you can see what this helmet looks like in the dirt only setup. Here we go. So here we are in the full moto setup here on this MX-9 Adventure Helmet. Go ahead and give you a 360 degree turn and then we're going to go ahead and throw the goggles in place. And this here is what the MX-9 Adventure Helmet looks like with a pair of goggles installed with the face shield having been removed. Now that we've explored the three main ways people are going to wear this helmet, let's dig into the guts of the helmet and take a look and see what the interior has to offer. Moving this helmet so you can see what it looks like looking underneath the helmet. We're going to have a nice setup here around the bottom. You're going to notice some contoured cheek pads here on either side. We have a nice soft plush feeling when it comes to the cheek pads and the helmet liner that's inside this helmet. You're going to notice a traditional D-ring here for the closure. It's going to be pretty common of most all of Bell's motocross style helmets. So let's go ahead and open this up and take a look on the inside of the helmet. Now the first thing you're going to notice is a yellow plasticky looking thing towards the crown of the helmet. That is going to be the MIPS slip liner. 
Now what MIPS does is it mitigates rotational impact. And we'll talk a little bit about that here in a second. Now if there's one thing I really like about Bell helmets is the fit and finish of even their entry level helmets seems to be far and above that as some of the other helmet manufacturers. When digging into the guts here, you can definitely feel that from this MX-9 Adventure Helmet. Now in order to get the cheek pads out here on the side, there are three very robust snaps. We have one in the very front, one at the top, and one at the bottom. Once those are released, you can go ahead and pull the cheek pad off of the chin strap. And we can repeat that process here on the other side. With the cheek pads removed, the first thing you're going to notice is we have speaker pockets cut out on both sides of this helmet. So you have a great opportunity to put a headset with speakers into this particular helmet. We're now going to reach in and undo the snaps at the rear of the comfort liner. And then working our way to the very front of the helmet, we have two more snaps up here. And that comfort liner slips right out. Well, looking close up at the internal liner, these are removable completely, as you can see, they're here on the table. They are machine washable. They're also antimicrobial, so they're going to keep you nice and fresh smelling, no matter how bad it gets out there. Now, as far as the cheek pads go, we saw helmet speaker cutouts in the EPS liner already, but this is a really neat feature that Bell does. They allow you to have these two pockets right here that you could slide your speakers into, seal them up, and then you've got your speaker encapsulated here in the cheek pad. This feature right here is going to allow that speaker to sit nice and close to your ear. It's going to have a nice smooth finish and it's going to be great for getting the best audio quality into your helmet. Now what you're looking at here on the inside of the helmet is going to be the MIPS liner. Now what happens is this headliner actually has a little Velcro piece that attaches to this particular liner here. And then if you take a look at the liner, we're going to be able to move that side to side. That rotation there is the give that this MIPS slip liner offers. Now how this works is if you were to get off the motorcycle, go down and have a crash, and your head goes boom and hits the ground. If your head hits and doesn't have any movement side to side or around, your brain is going to be the next thing that's going to move and jar inside your brain cavity. So this MIPS slip liner, what's going to happen is when, you, when the helmet hits the ground on the outside, boom, it's going to hit. And on the inside, you're going to have this slip on the inside. And that slip is going to mitigate the rotational force that's typically transmitted to your brain. Now, this is a patented brain protection program. Again, it's called MIPS. And this is the kind of energy transformation that we're seeing when a helmet is tested with or without the MIPS product inside of it. As you can see here, all of the red translates into a very bad situation. And as you can see over here, we have a lot less force being put on the brain when a helmet with MIPS is being worn. Now looking past that MIPS liner, you can see that there are some large cutouts in the EPS liner itself. Now all of those cutouts correspond to each of the vents that you find here on the outside of the helmet. So these vents basically go straight through to your skull so that you can get the benefit of the ventilation that Bell has built into this helmet. Now it's time to jump into this helmet so I can explain to you exactly what I'm feeling as I'm putting the helmet on. Now I typically wear a size small helmet. I measure 55 and a half centimeters in circumference and Bell's small is between 55 and 56. So it should be a perfect fit. The other thing you're going to be able to notice or be able to hear about is how it fits with my glasses. So pulling the helmet into place, I can say that the crown of the helmet feels a little bit shorter than some of the other helmets that I've worn in this segment. Some of the others come down a little bit further on the forehead and kind of feel like the, your head's encapsulated just a little bit more than it is in this particular helmet. That sizing is absolutely perfect, so this helmet does fit true to size. And sliding my glasses on, they have done a good job at creating a side profile here that definitely is conducive to wearing glasses. Let me get this chin strap fastened so we can see the placement of the chin strap and how that feels. This it feels really good. The padded strap that comes all the way down here around the side of the chin feels really good as well. Now as far as the face shield goes, it has a very, very easy operation and because that thumb indention is right here in the center, you can get to it with either hand without any problems at all whatsoever. 
Now with the goggles in place, you can take a look and see what this looks like in the dual sport setup with the goggles in place with the visor or face shield still installed. Very, very nice setup. It's a very comfortable feel. Bell, you've done a great job when it comes to this setup right here. Now I'll go ahead and give you the 360 degree with just the peak visor and face shield installed in the down position. And there you have it, the Bell MX-9 Adventure with MIPS. This is a phenomenal dual sport adventure or even street moto helmet, depending on how you have this helmet configured. This is DOT, it's ECE rated, it's lightweight, and it's very, very functional. If you like what you saw today, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any more questions about this, please leave a comment below. And if you want more action like this, coming directly to your inbox, please hit that subscribe button, but more importantly, the notification bell. Until next time, as always, take care and ride safe out there.